Classical literature is filled with incredible stories of war, romance, action, murder, doubt, religion, and many other great themes. Revisiting those works can allow us to re-experience these great stories by reading them, but watching them unfold in live action on the screen with real life actors playing the characters that we know can also be quite an experience. On the one hand, it might elevate the work by allowing you to experience the story with more than just sheer words in your imagination, but with your eyes and ears as well. But on the other hand, if the people who made the film didn't really do the story justice at all, then you might completely load what you just saw. This is a challenge of adaptation. How do you properly adapt a pre-existing work of art onto another medium? One of the most well-known types of adaptation is very often from book to film. And since cinema allows for so many different styles of directing, it's no surprise we've seen so many offbeat and extravagant adaptations since we first invented the motion picture. With all this potential, most of the great works of literature have had at least one attempt for an adaptation on film. Some works like Sherlock Holmes or A Christmas Cow have even had several dozens of adaptations simply because of their timeless appeal. But isn't there a point where this is too much? I mean, after a while you pretty much know the story and what it's trying to say. You've read it and seen it so many times that it might actually lose the impact it was supposed to have in the first place. However, I'd like to argue that's not entirely true, and I'll be using my most recent favorite adaptation of a classic work of literature as an example. The adaptation I'm referring to today is Baz Luhrmann's The Great Gatsby that came out in 2014. As the title indicates, the film is an adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic novel of the same name, and I'm not going to waste too much time introducing it since I'm sure most of you are already aware of it. In short, it is considered to be one of the greatest novels in American literature, and probably one of the greatest stories of all time. Set in the Jazz Age on Long Island, the novel depicts narrator Nick Carraway's interactions with the mysterious millionaire Jay Gatsby and his obsession to reunite with his former lover, Daisy Buchanan. The novel also comments on social class, inherited wealth compared to those who are self-made, and displays an overall cynical attitude towards the American dream. It was adapted onto film four times, and out of all of them, the most ambitious and extravagant one is clearly Lerman's. For those who aren't familiar with his work, Baz Luhrmann is an Australian film director and writer who also worked on a multitude of various projects, ranging from opera to stage plays and musicals. Lerman was already familiar with the challenges that come with adapting a classic after he directed his own version of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet back in 1996. This adaptation was met with some mixed reviews, since he had made the choice to have the action set in modern day America, which means with guns instead of swords, obviously, while keeping the original dialogue intact. The finished result was a very surreal experience, to say the least. Tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aim so near when I supposed you love. A right good marksman, and she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz. Why may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. And so did and I. And what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh! The blending of Shakespearean language with a 90s style drama piece turned out to be quite a challenge for modern audiences, who usually expect an adaptation to be either set in the original time frame or a fully modernized version. Now it's safe to say Lerman is not a director who's afraid of taking risks, even at the cost of potentially dividing his audience. And when he adapted The Great Gatsby, he again made some bold choices that would instill his own style while keeping everything faithful to Fitzgerald's original work. While most of the story elements and plot were identical to the novel, the visuals and sounds of the film are what truly makes it a work of its own. What would I write about? Anything. Whatever brings you ease. A memory. A thought. A place. CGI streets to the over-the-top article production design and the modern hip-hop induced tracks playing all over 1920s New York City, this is a version of The Great Gatsby that feels both unique because of these bold choices but also modern because of the technology that allows all of these shots to exist. All of these elements combined are enough of a reason to readapt a classic work of literature in my opinion. It allows for a new telling, a new discovery of the original work through fresh eyes. This not only modernizes the work to the point where it can truly stand on its own as a great work of art regardless of the original material it's 
it's based on, but it can also attempt to reach out to a much younger and contemporary audience who might not be familiar with the story or with literature in general. This brings me to my second point, which is that adaptations like these introduce a great number of people to some classic novels they might not have had, had the time to study or learn about in school, if they even went to school at all. It's no secret that films are much more popular and accessible than books these days. As a cinephile, I'm of course thrilled to see that so many people on earth are watching movies, but there is a part of me that feels kind of sorry for writers and book lovers. I don't read that many books myself, even though I should. My problem is that I don't have enough consistency in my reading, since it usually takes me weeks or months to finish a novel. However, whenever a big name director gets the funding to make a modern adaptation of a very old, well-known and respected novel, it almost always makes me excited. And if I really enjoyed the film, I might actually try and tackle the book, even though I probably wouldn't have by myself. I mean, I probably would not have read A Clockwork Orange if it wasn't because of Kubrick's stupidly great blocking and camera work. I probably would not have discovered Hunter S. Thompson's surreal gonzo style of writing if it wasn't for Terry Gilliam's talent for bringing crazy characters and situations to life. And there were even times where the announcement of an adaptation itself was enough to start me reading. For example, the first time I saw the trailer for David Fincher's take on The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I was hyped beyond belief. So hyped, in fact, that the first thing that I did coming out of the theater was to go to a library and purchase the book that I had wanted to read for years but never really got around to. The fact that one of my favorite directors was going to adapt a book I heard so much about really pushed me to finally read it. Now, of course, there is a difference between reading a novel before and after seeing its adaptation. If I'm being honest, the few times I read a book and then watched it on film, I was often disappointed. Not with Fincher, though. That film was amazing. But I remember watching American Psycho after reading the uh, traumatizing book it is based on and feeling like it had been polished and cleaned up to make it more suitable for a Hollywood production. Taking into account these risks for disappointment, there's no denying that adaptation is a difficult exercise for any filmmaker, and yet I still believe it's a crucial one. Not only does it make for a solid source material that you know has artistic quality, it's also a way for the filmmaker to instill his own style into one of his favorite works. Moreover, it allows for a new generation of audiences to get familiar with some of history's greatest stories, which might in turn inspire some of them to make new stories of their own. Thank you again for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of content, please take some time to check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel if you want some more. Once again, I'll see you guys in two weeks for a new video. Take care in the meantime.